beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. And now in him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. So, building a foundation that he is our source. There is no other. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And and I've got a ton of scripture. And like I said, my eyes are on the clock. So, yeah, I hear the laugh back. Okay. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 4 through 6. Now the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image. I love that. Who is the image. Jesus is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. You know, because that's, that, it all comes back, everything filtered through Jesus. You know, and and for me, I, I, I had a struggle understanding that relationship with the Father and, and, and Jesus. It's, it's kind of funny talking to a brother here t- earlier that, you know, Jesus was who I received, who I loved, who loved me. And, and I, I had gotten married, and I, over a couple of years, I, I told my wife, I said, you know what your problem is? You just pray wrong. Yeah, big mistake. Now she, and there's a reason why she's not here tonight. She's, she's got, you know, one of the, she'd kill me if I, she knew I told you. She's got one of these eyebrows that cocks, you know. So I can see her facial expression. All I go, and I just see that cock, and I know I'm in trouble. So tomorrow she will see, and she might cock it. But anyway, so... I used to tell her, you know, because she had such a strong um, foundation. Her father and mother loved the Lord very much. I didn't come from that background. And as we got married, um, but she had this relationship with the father. And she would always pray in Jesus' name. And I was like, but, Jesus, but the father is not the one who did all this. Jesus is the one who did all this. He's the one I can relate to. I can't relate to the father, you know, basically just because of my image of a father. And so when Jesus came down and became that image, you know, I learned as I grew and I I had children and felt and found the love I have for my own children, I began to understand a father's heart. But Jesus come to reveal the father's heart. And, and, and so part of this whole thing for me is, is there's nothing I will ever tell anybody that will help them other than if they fall in love with Jesus and his word. Because that's all the, all the cures. I know there's things we got to work on. You know, we all have issues. But, but Jesus, falling in love with Jesus. I mean, if I can help men some way fall in love with Jesus, then my job is done. Then after that, all I have to do is love them. Because Jesus said, I give you this one command. Love God and love me. I tell it to my brothers, and they're like, see, like Don, look at, he's looking at me like, your job is, is to love God and to love me. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? But yet, it's one of the hardest things there is to do is to love each other. But do you know that that's how the world recognizes that the love that they have for each other. I mean, I would rather have three committed men than an auditorium full of, you know, room dwellers. 
You know what I'm saying? In John chapter 14, and in my last few minutes when I wrap up, I'm just going to go through and give you a highlight of some of the 316s. Just enough to whet your appetite, to get you into, or for whatever. Like I said, this is just something that's on my heart. Um, going back to the Gospel of John. Because, you know, my, I'm trying to, there's a, there's a strategy. The enemy has blinded the mind of unbelievers. I once was an unbeliever, and he blinded my mind. So how do I compete against that, Lord? How do I know who's going to receive and who's not? He's like, you don't. You know, the wind, just the, the spirit as it goes. You know, one of the, 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 the John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, yes. But the story of Nicodemus, I mean, that's what I hope to put in. in, in, in it's not just the scripture, but the scripture is the lead direction to talk about. There's whole, so much more. One of the things about Scripture is Scripture interprets Scripture. And how do I get to somebody to, you know, to the story? Because it talks about Nicodemus. It talks about being born again. Yes, it talks about for God so loved the world. But the Scripture can get you to that story. And you tend to remember the story based on... Does it make sense? So, John um, chapter 14... Verse 5, he says, Now Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. For if you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen, I mean, that is, that's a bold statement. You have seen him. You've seen me, so you have seen him. And Philip said, but Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. And Jesus answered, don't you know me? Philip, even after I've been among you such a long time, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. I mean, doesn't that put you in a different realm of God's word? You know, I'm just here doing what the Father tells me to do. So, how he reveals. You know, that was his good purpose to do it the way he has done it through that relationship. Because I don't know if I could have had a relationship with the Father. I don't know. But through Jesus, I can. You know, and Jesus brought himself to the lowest, brings the Father to the highest to save a, a simple man like myself. The most complicated person, he, there's scripture here to, to deal with that. But me, I'm a very simple-minded man, young man. But his life, he spoke into the darkness. You see, where it says that the, that the enemy has blinded the, the minds of the unbeliever. You know, they're in this darkness. But we can't forget, it is God's word that shines the light in that darkness. It is his spoken word. The importance of his word that reveals. So yes, Satan has blinded the minds, but it's God's light that shines through. It's his spoken word that shines through. And there is one man who had it figured out. And I love this guy. It's just a little book. It's called the Book of Philemon. And uh, uh, right before Hebrews, it's real easy to miss that one, isn't it? Now, as we all know, Philemon was a, 
a man and he had servants and there was a servant that had ran away, stole some stuff and ran away. And, and he ran away into Paul's uh, company and he became a believer. And he actually became very dear to Paul. So Paul wrote this book as he was sending him. He says, I just want you to receive him as a brother. You know, perhaps all this happened so God, the goodness would come from it. But I love the way he addressed Philemon. Chapter 1, verse 4. He says, I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers because I hear about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints. He loved Jesus and he loved the people. He figured it out. But there was, there was something that went along with that. He says, but I pray that you may be active in sharing your faith. So he, he proclaimed his faith so that you will have all understanding of every good thing we have in Christ. See, that's by, 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 by teaching the word, God revealed in him the mystery through that. It's, it's like stepping in the water before it splits. That faith in Jesus. One of Joshua, chapter 3, verse 16, talks about the floodwaters on the Jordan were held back. And I'm so grateful that story is in the 316 because it's a wonderful story for a young believer to see the miraculous of God. But what, but what the priest had to do before things were backed up is they had to get their feet wet. And that's what he calls us to do. Get your feet wet, even though you don't see it. For faith is, is, is accompanied by our action, but something that we don't see, we don't understand. But we take that step. And again, that's in Joshua chapter 3, verse 16. So... Just real quick here, I'll finish up by talking just a couple of the 316s. Um, of course, John 316, the, the story of Nicodemus and, and uh, how God loves this world. And in um, Luke chapter 3, within the verse 16, it talks about how Jesus, and I'm not going to go to all these scriptures just because for the sake of time. But he talks about the Holy Spirit being giving when Jesus is baptized and he saw heaven open up. Of course, uh, in Mark chapter 3, verse 16, he introduces all the disciples. I mean, what, what a learning tool for a young believer that we train them. I mean, like I said, this is my heart. Okay, a little walk through, spend time with, you know, my heart is to maybe put in like a, a little 40-day thing, your first 40 days in Christ, you know, and here's these scriptures and here's how you walk through. I mean, to train them with God's word with, uh, of substance. And it's amazing, the 316, the scriptures. Hebrews chapter 3, where it says, for today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart like they did in the rebellion talking about Moses and all the children of Israel. We've all seen, you know, uh, Moses and all that. So that, that's in most people's minds. But it opens up to talk about that whole experience because there's such richness in it, in his story. I mean, the Old Testament, I mean, I love the Old Testament stories. Just they're humongous, the amount of them. First Peter 3.16 talks about your good behavior, clear conscience. Very important to a young believer. Second Peter 3, 16 talks about how people distort God's word. I mean, that's important. When I was a young believer, a good friend of mine was, was uh, uh, had his own Bible. And his Bible said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. It's like, hmm. Well, that's the JWs, they believe. They, they switched that a little bit. You know, instead of was God, it was a God. Huge. Huge. 
2 Corinthians 3. The veil is taken away when anybody is in Christ. I mean, those are huge things for the knowledge of starting to grow in Christ. 1 Samuel chapter 3 talks about Samuel saying, Lord, here I am. Oh, and I love that story. Because just as Eli and him, they're going through all this. And, you know, and Samuel three times, here's the Lord. But he, it says that he hadn't yet known the Lord. But he was obedient. I said, when you hear it again, just say, here I am, Lord. I mean, what a way to come before the Lord. Here I am. And like I say, there, there are plenty more. First John chapter 3, verse 16. This is how we know what love is. That Jesus laid down his life. Therefore, you should do the same for your brothers. I mean, awesome. And with that, I'm going to close because I'm right at about 30 minutes. But so the worship folks will come back up. And, uh, and thank you for letting me share my heart. Like I say, there's a lot of broken parts here, but it's just a process that I hope to, that the Lord will let me put together and when I get it done I'm going to put it in a drawer and say thank you Lord and if he wants to use it that's that would be my heart so thank you guys